Alright, in this introduction to Site Catalyst 15, I will be covering only the basics, the navigation, the interface, and anything related to those topics. Alright, so I will start from the very top and kind of work my way down through uh, the interface itself. Uh, up here we have the Adobe Marketing Cloud, which you can click on, and it gives you access to Site Catalyst and all the various Adobe Marketing Cloud uh, suite programs. However, if your company does not currently have a license to them, it will only give you a white paper with some information about that product and that's it. You will not be able to log into those particular items. But if you have Site Catalyst, you can access the various uh, Site Catalyst options here, including the reporting, which is what we're looking at now. There's Data Warehouse, etc. Um, so this, this is how you kind of navigate to some of the Site Catalyst options here. Uh, next is favorites and this is how you can go in and manage your bookmarks, manage your dashboards, um, work with your uh, calculated metrics, uh, work with your targets, uh, then you have alerts, calendar events, scheduled reports, archive reports, and report settings. Um, and those will be covered in much more detail in future tutorials. Uh, then you have a community button uh, with some community I um, <clears throat> Then you have the community button with some access to community options. Uh, there's a forum, uh, there's some customer information, um, there's an idea exchange, etc., etc., and those are things that you are free to explore at any time. Uh, you may have notices, and here, Wonder Help, you have access to uh, client care, knowledge base, and some uh, training videos, etc., that will help you uh, as you use. Um, Site Catalyst as well. So if you have access to Site Catalyst currently, um, there are a lot of training videos here. Uh, the purpose of the reason that I'm doing these tutorials on YouTube is for people who might not currently have access to Site Catalyst but want to learn how the interface and how the tool itself works and how it compares to other tools. Alright, so that's the very top. Um, then you have the, your logos and then you have two drop down menus over here. The first one is your report suites um, and if you click on it um, there's various report suites in here and I'm just going to click on that very quickly. And um, for your company, your organization, each one of your various data sets, each report suite is its own data set and uh, you can group your data sets based on either uh, individual websites if you have more than one website internal versus external websites you can actually have uh, a report suite that uh, has data from more than one website all rolled up in together so there's a, ver a variety of ways of, of, of having multiple report suites uh, for your company and that's all based on what your team decides and how they want to use the report suite structure um, and then over here you have access to your segments and segmentation to be able to segment data. So to access, to create segments, to use uh, existing segments, you use that from this drop down menu here. All right, then going down from there, we have um, additional favorites. So you have access to some to a lot of favorites here, and then some of them will actually appear in the navigation over here. So you have your bookmarks, your dashboards, and any shared dashboards um, that were shared with you from uh, someone else on another account uh, within your organization. Um, and then if you have a lot of favorites on this menu, there is a search function that allows you to uh, do a search. So I could actually go in here and I can actually start typing the name of uh, one of my dashboards and it appears in here um, automatically. Um, the same goes for the left navigation over here uh, where you have um, all sorts of reports and things and you can actually just start typing. So if you want to find the visit report, you don't know where it's, it's found, you can just start typing and then you can actually see all the various visit reports um, that are available and you can choose the appropriate one. Um, just quickly, I will also kind of go through the various groupings of um, the reports and report structure um, in this navigation. So, so under site metrics, you have anything related to metrics data, um, whether it's uh, e-commerce metrics like purchases and shopping cart, or you have your page views and visits and all of those types of metrics, including your custom events that you may or may not have set up. And I have one custom event set up where I'm tracking how many comments I get in on my various blog posts. 
All right, so the next group is site content. So any kind of content related reports are listed here. Um, mobile, these are all of your mobile reports, of course. Um, paths, so you have pathing enabled. By default, um, pages um, have pathing enabled, but then you can also have pathing enabled on other variables, including here I have pathing enabled for internal search and internal search results, and all the various types of pathing reports um, that can be found are found under here as well. Then you have your traffic sources and all the various ways that people come to your website uh, are reported through these reports here. Um, if you have any kind of campaigns running, um, whether it's a paid search campaign or a banner ad campaign on a specific website, etc., uh, if you are tracking those through Site Catalyst, all of those reports are going to be in here, including any kind of classifications that you have defined um, in uh, within the Saint tool, uh, which will be uh, covered, of course, uh, in a future tutorial. Um, so here, products, if you have an e-commerce site, you will have uh, the products or reports um, that may be useful for e-commerce. Uh, then for visitor retention, um, anything that kind of shows you how visitors um, that have been to your site are coming back and are staying on your website. Um, as well as for e-commerce, you have customer loyalty and other types of uh, reports that make sense for uh, e-commerce type of websites. Visitor profile gives you uh, detailed information about the visitors to your website, including where they come from, uh, regionally, uh, worldwide, what kind of technology they use, etc. Uh, then you have your custom conversions, which I have none set up at the moment, but this is where any kind of custom uh, conversion reports, or um, they're also called EVARs. Um, if you uh, come across any kind of site catalyst discussions online, if you see anyone talking about an EVAR, they're talking about a custom conversion. And similarly with custom traffic, if they talk about an SPROP, um, they are talking about custom traffic. And I do have three SPROPs right now set up, um, internal search, internal search results, and logged in. So whether or not a user is logged in or not uh, when they are visiting my website. Um, then uh, test and target is uh, another Adobe tool that integrates with Site Catalyst, and if you do have that integration, then all of your test and target reports that are integrated with Site Catalyst are available through here. Um, if you have surveys enabled, um, those reports are here. Same goes for any kind of Genesis integrations you have. And then if you have marketing channels enabled, you will see those reports under this menu. Uh, one caveat I would like to make is that all of the navigation that you see here, uh, this is the out of the box default navigation. Um, if you are doing any kind of video tracking, that will be added later once video tracking has properly been enabled. Um, a video tracking um, navigation option is added. And then also, if you are an admin, you can actually um, customize this navigation. Uh, you can rename things, you can hide things, you can reorganize uh, items. Uh, you can't uh, necessarily organize search keywords under campaigns, for example, but you can within any one of the submenus and within the main menu, you can you can drag and drop or reorganize things and um, hide them from view. Um, and it's all uh, report suite specific. So you can organize it in one way for one report suite and completely differently uh, in a second report suite. So uh, it is entirely up to your super user admin um, to determine the right uh, mix and the right uh, order for all of the reports within the navigation as they customize it. All right, now, as you can see here, the first thing when I logged in, I get a site overview. This site overview that you're seeing here um, is kind of the default out of the box, what you see when you first log in. You can actually set a dashboard or a bookmark as the first thing that you see when you log in instead. And if you don't set that up, then it will always default to the site overview report, which is always found under site metrics. So if you ever replace site overview with something else, you can still get to this data um, directly through that report. 
All right, so I just ran the pages report in order to show you a few more of the navigation options within reports uh, rather than just the site overview, which doesn't have as many of them. So first of all, here we have download, which when you click on, you can see the various file types that you have as an option to download. Uh, next, you have send, which allows you to email the report to yourself. And you have options, um, the same options as download, but then you also have HTML and mobile as uh, new options as well. And you can have um, scheduling, etc. There's advanced delivery options that you can do, but um, those are those are you know things that you can uh, play around with and uh, send the report to yourself. Uh, next is the bookmark option where you can name the report and put it into your bookmark folder, create a new folder, etc. Uh, you can make it public. You can display this report upon login. As I said before, uh, for bookmarks and dashboards, you can choose to have one of them display when you log in instead of the site overview. And so for the bookmarks, this is how you can do that. And then we have dashboard. This actually brings up a pop-up menu and it gives you uh, a number of uh, options within here. And um, I believe it's from the dashboard menu itself where you can actually add the dashboard to your uh, login where uh, you can't do it from here as you could with the bookmarks. And then there are more actions besides that. You can print, you can extract data. So instead of just 200 rows of data, I think you can get up to 5,000 rows of data with extract data and you can um, slice and dice them and organize them a little bit differently than, than, than you have here as well. So you have some options with extract data. Uh, you can add an alert so that if your content uh, changes, your traffic changes within a given time period or, or whatnot, um, you can get an alert. Uh, you can create custom reports so you can customize this report that you're looking at and then add it to a uh, custom report menu. Uh, you can copy the graph itself, so I can uh, demonstrate that very quickly. So you have uh, just the graph here, and then you can um, save it, copy it, etc., and bring it into a PowerPoint slide, Excel present, uh, or Excel spreadsheet, etc. Uh, then you can uh, provide a link to this report, and you can also open this report in a new window. So those are all the various reporting options that you have. And besides that, within the report itself, you also have uh, a number of different things. You can look at the data either trended or ranked. Um, you can um, select different metrics. So if you select it on here, you can actually, you can see all the various different metrics in here and you can drag and drop them and, and change, uh, change what metrics you are looking at. Uh, besides that, uh, you can have a correlation filter and you can actually see uh, the various correlation filters here. You can select them, etc., and 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 look at the data in that way. Uh, you can have a data filter, and that just drops you down here to this little search filter over here. And this works, and I can just scroll back up here. Um, that works very similar to how you search for reports, etc. You can look at. Let's say I wanted to find every. Uh, mention of analytics in a page title within this report. And so I do that and now I have uh, this report now organized specifically by anything that mentions analytics. Um, and then there's an advanced option here as well so that you can do a contains, does not contain, matches phrase. You have a number of different options. Um, you can also, you know, you can have more than one of these and you can have um, match it if all the criteria are met or if any criteria are met. And you can also use regular expressions. And here are some of the regular expression uh, symbols that you are allowed to use within your regular expression as you're doing a filter search. This is very handy if you have a very, very large, complex website um, and a lot of content that you need to, to filter and search through. All right, uh, and I'll go ahead and take off that data filter. Then you can compare to site. And if, let's say you have an English version of your website and you have a Japanese version of your website and you want to see how they are doing, uh, let's say that the, the two sites are identical other than language, of course, but the navigation, page names, etc., are the same. And so you can go ahead, you can go find your Japan, you know, you have those in separate report suites. You can bring in um, that particular uh, report into here and you can do a side by side comparison. Uh, compare to segments. So if you have uh, different segments 
and you can take a look at I want to do uh, a comparison of this report uh, visits from Facebook um, versus visits from uh, social sites in general um, so you have various um, comparisons that you can make there all right and then you also have percent shown as number and if you look down here at the report you can see here that your percentages are shown as a number you can also display that instead as a graph so let me rerun this real quickly and now the percentage is a graph instead and if you mouse over it you can still see the percentage number but it gives you a visual representation rather than a, a numerical representation of um, that percentage data and that's basically so um, home page has 109 visits and that equals 33.1 percent of all visits across pages um, so if that makes sense all right so those are some of um, the report options and then you can also configure your graph so right now my graph is a um, horizontal vertical um, horizontal bar uh, you can do a stacked horizontal bar instead um, so you can kind of see how uh, visits versus visitors versus page views um, compare across each page. Uh, you can also look at it. Um, you can see here vertical bars, stacked vertical bars, scatter uh, reports, pie reports, bubble reports. Now these are not all, all of these various reports are not available across every single report. Um, you know, different reports have different graphs available. This particular uh, report, the Pages report, has the bubble graph available. That one is not available across everything. So it really, it really depends on the report that you're looking at. Um, here is your pie chart report, and you can see how the visits break down versus page views versus um, unique visitors, and what percent of total you're looking at. Because here you're only looking at the top five pages in each and then um, what slice of the whole pie are you getting in terms of uh, those top five. So you, so you can see here what's interesting is uh, between the number of page visits and unique monthly page visitors, they're very similar in terms of the slice of the whole pie for uh, the website. But when, if you look at page views, these top five pages take up, uh, bring in a whole bunch more page views than the rest of uh, the site uh, in terms of what slice of the pie that represents. So that can be interesting uh, information to, in, uh, to analyze. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is the calendar. It's currently set to June 2013. Uh, you can change the date range any way you want. You can just you know click on any number and just kind of drag your mouse across to see any uh, particular date range, if there's any specific thing, like you have a campaign running from the 11th to the 20th and you want to specifically hone in on that uh, date range to see how that in, um, how that has affected your data just for that week and so you can do that uh, you can just click on the months to select the whole month or you can click on um, just like the first of the month and just kind of drag it across to get various months there or you can just click on the year and you can actually here you have month and year and you can actually click on year and kind of back out and then you can click and select an entire quarter or multiple quarters etc um, so you can look at it by either by month or by year uh, you can type in the date ranges you can select a preset etc um, so you have a lot of different options in terms of how you can use um, the calendar and so you can also compare dates and here you can select perhaps you know uh, this particular uh, time range in July and compare it to this particular time range in June and then you can run your report and here you can see uh, the time ranges and the blue is uh, the July and uh, the yellow is the June and you can see how they compare to each other month over month or week over week or time period over time period uh, just depending on what it is you're trying to measure at that particular time. Alright so I think that pretty much wraps up all of the main things that I think are uh, basics that everyone should know when first logging into Psycatalyst. So please join me next week for my next tutorial. If uh, this was at all useful for you, please like this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And uh, if you are looking forward to any future videos, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.